Let's take a look at how to calculate net work on a slope. Now, as soon as an object is on a slope, you know that gravity acts straight down like this. So if I were to draw in the force of gravity, it acts here straight down to the ground. And because of that, we can actually resolve weight into components. We have a perpendicular component and we have a parallel component. I'll get to this in a little bit more detail in a second. Now, work is done by gravity, but we can also say work is done by the perpendicular component and work is done by the parallel component. And it is often easier to break up the weight into components and deal with it that way. So first of all, what do I mean by calculate the network on the car, calculate the network done? So a boy drives his three kilogram remote controlled car up a four meter long track inclined at 25 degrees to the horizontal so this angle here is 25 degrees it's very important that we know that angle and the car's motor exerts a forward force of magnitude 14 newton so in other words the force that is causing the car to move up the slope this force is parallel to the slope and it's going up the slope this is almost like a force applied you can also call it a force of the engine something like that that is 14 newtons and then of course we have frictional force which would act in the opposite direction now because i have multiple forces acting on the car I will have work done by all of these different forces and there will be a net work. Now, just to remind you, there's two methods that we can use to calculate net work. I've explained both of these in my net work video, so please go watch that if you haven't yet. But we can calculate net work by calculating the sum of the work done by the individual forces. So what I mean by that is to get the net work, we first calculate the work done by the applied force. And then we add that to the work done by the frictional force. And we add that to the work done by the normal force. And we add that to the work done by the gravitational force. As I said, we could also, instead of saying work done by gravitational force, we could say the parallel components of the gravitational force and the perpendicular components of the gravitational force. I feel that it's often easier to break them up in that way. So that's the first method. The second method to calculate the net work is to first calculate the net force. So we use this net work formula. So F delta X cos theta. If I want to calculate net work in one shot, then the F that I would use here would be F net multiplied by delta X and then multiplied by cos theta. And we would get F net by using Newton's laws of motion and all that stuff that we did in Newton's laws. I'm going to do this example using both methods, but I do want to mention in both cases, I will be resolving or breaking weight up FG. I will be breaking FG up into components, FG parallel and FG perpendicular. Just, I find it easier like that. Some teacher tips. Now, I like to give teacher tips in my videos so that they can help you get everything correct in your test. I know where students go wrong. I set exams, I mark exams. So draw a free body diagram, even if the question didn't ask. I recommend breaking weight up into components. You don't have to, but I think it makes it easier. And when you are calculating work done by a force, so when you are using this formula, work done by a force, you never ever sub in F over here as negative. Not even when you're calculating the work done by friction. Okay. So let's tackle this question and I will be starting with method one. First things first, let's draw the free body diagram. Like I said, it is going to be helpful. Now in my videos on Newton's laws and free body diagrams, you, my students, you all should know that I like to draw the slope in in pencil to help me. So I like to draw the slope in like that. Then I draw the object as a dot. Then what forces are acting on my control, remote control car? As I mentioned, FG or W, gravity, acts straight down to the ground. I'm going to label it over here, F, G. You can call it W as well, that's perfect. Then as we, we said, there's a car's motor exerting a force of 40 newtons up the slope. That's going to be up the slope and parallel to the slope. So it goes along the slope. You can call that F motor, you can call it F engine, but you can also call it F applied. It's an applied force acting on the car, pulling it up the slope. Then in the opposite direction to the motion. So just to be very clear, which way is this car going? The displacement of the car is going up the slope. The car is moving up the slope. So friction acts in the opposite direction of the motion, parallel to the ground or the floor or the, the, the floor that it's moving on or the, the surface that it's moving on, that's friction. 
and then one more force is acting on it. Because this object is on a surface, the normal force acts 90 degrees to the surface. So like this, remember you must draw in your, nine, your, your normal force as if there's a 90 degree angle over there. It doesn't have to be exact. You don't need to measure it with a protractor, but it needs to look more or less 90 degrees. There's my free body diagram. Now I can erase the slope. The slope is just there to help me get my free body diagram looking more or less correct. And then what I will be doing on my free body diagram, because this is one that I'm not doing for marks. I'm just doing it to help me. I'm going to resolve weight into components. So we've got FG perpendicular and this one over here, which is FG parallel. Now, as you should know, if the angle of the slope is 25 degrees, this angle over here is 25 degrees. And like I mentioned earlier, I will be working out what FG parallel is and what FG perpendicular is, because I believe that it's going to help me with my calculations. Now, as I taught you in Newton's laws, to calculate the parallel components of FG, you say mass times gravitational acceleration times sin or sine of the angle of the slope. And to work out FG perpendicular, it's mass times gravitational acceleration times cos of the angle of the slope. These formulas can be learned off by heart. They will never, ever change. I taught it to you in the Newton's Law section. I'll link those videos down below if you want to go over those videos. You do need to know that for grade 12 as well. So the, the mass is 3 kilograms. Gravitational acceleration is 9.8. And my angle is 25. And over here, again, my mass is 3. Gravitational acceleration is 9.8. And my angle is 25. Now, grade 12s. What I've done so far is I've worked out what the parallel component of FG is. It's this number over here. And I know I haven't gotten a, an, a single answer. You can type it into your calculator. You can get an answer. But remember, you're not allowed to round that off. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm not going to actually type this into my calculator and get an answer. I'm going to just rewrite this whole thing later if necessary. Same thing with FG perpendicular. I'm just going to rewrite this whole thing later if I find it necessary if I need it. Okay, so let's actually jump into the question. I need to calculate the net work done on this car. Okay, so net work is equal to the work done by. Now, look at the forces that I have. I have an applied force. So it's going to be work done by F applied. Then we're going to say plus. It's always plus. Plus the work done by the frictional force. So basically all the forces you see, we calculate the work done by that force. The work done by the frictional force plus. Now we have the normal force. The work done by the normal force. Work done by normal force plus. Now remember I told you I like to work with the components of the weight and not the weight itself, the gravity uh, FG plus FG perpendicular. So work done by FG perpendicular plus work done by FG parallel. There's my last force over here. Let's do it in a purple. There, there we go. So we add the work done by each of the individual forces. I'm going to write my work formula once somewhere on my page because as you know, to get a formula mark, you need to write your formula somewhere. So I will be applying this formula over here and over here and over here and over here and over here. So basically it'll look like this, but I'm not going to write out the formula five different times. I write it once on the top of my page and then in the second line over here, I can start substituting immediately. So remember, work done by F applied. So we're first going to sub in the F. What is the F applied? What is the force applied? 40 newtons. Okay, we multiply that by delta x, the displacement. How far did the car move? We said the car moved four meters, so it's going to be multiplied by four. And then cos of the angle. Now you need to start thinking very carefully. Which way is the car moving? The car's moving up the slope like that. And which way is F applied acting? Up the slope like that, F applied. Do you see that they're both acting at the exact same angle? They're going in the exact same direction. There's no angle between them. So students often struggle to understand this. If applied is going up the slope and the car is moving up the slope, there's no angle between them. So that means that your theta for that is zero. Then you're going to say plus. Now let's do the work done by friction. Now again, refer to your main formula. F is your frictional force. And remember, you do not sub your frictional force in as negative. It's 15. Leave it as positive. 
your displacement is four, once again, and now your angle. Which way is the car moving? Okay, I've already indicated it over here. It's moving up the slope. Which way is friction acting? Down the slope. What is the angle between them? That's a straight line. The angle is 180. So you're going to go cos 180. Then plus. Now, work done by the normal force and work done by FG perpendicular. These are interesting ones because which way is the car moving? Again, it's moving up the slope. Now, look at the angle of the normal force. As you know, the normal force acts like this. The car is moving like this. Do you see the angle is 90 degrees? So if N is going like this, the car is moving up the slope. The angle is 90. And I can fill this in here. Sure, if I want. It's going to be the force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by cos 90. And what is cos 90? Cos 90 is zero. So if cos 90 is zero, then the entire thing is going to be zero. So this whole work done by Fn is going to be zero. Same thing as work done by Fg. Now again, let's look at your picture. Which way is the car going? The car is going up the slope. Which way is Fg perpendicular? This one over here. Can you see that it's like this? That is Fg perpendicular. And that is the way that the car is moving. Again, the angle between them is 90 degrees. So again, work done by Fg perpendicular is zero. Okay, so if I use my colors just to color coordinate, this is work done by the frictional, I mean the normal force, sorry. And this is work done by Fg perpendicular. Then our last one, work done by Fg parallel. Now, this one is important. Remember, when we sub in the work done, Remember, work done by Fg parallel is equal to the force, delta x, cos theta. So we always, always, always come back to this formula. Now think about it. What is this F is Fg parallel? This is Fg parallel. And remember, we worked that out earlier. Remember, I made you work it out down here. Okay. So take your mind back to when we did this in the beginning. So this whole number here, 3 times 9.8 times sin 25, that is... Fg parallel. So I'm going to say, okay, Fg, work done by Fg parallel is the force. So the force is 3 times 9.8 times sin 25. This whole thing here is Fg parallel. Again, I worked it out over here. I'm just not getting the answer because I don't want to round off yet. Then I multiply that whole thing by the displacement, which is 4. And then that whole thing must be multiplied by cos of the angle. Now, this is where people get confused once again. Which way is the car moving? The car is moving up the slope. Which way is the parallel component of gravity pulling the car? The parallel component of gravity is pulling the car down the slope. So as you can see, this force, look at the purple highlighted one. Look which way it's pointing. Down the slope like that. The displacement is up the slope. Can you see the angle is 180, just like friction? Look at my free body diagram. Friction and Fg parallel are pointing in the exact same direction. So this is going to be cos 180. I hope that this is making sense. It does get very complicated when the object is on the slope. And then to find W net, you basically type this whole thing in on your calculator. And when I type all of that in my calculator, I get an answer of 50 comma 30 joules. Remember, you round off to two decimal places, your unit is joules, and there we go. Now, the second method that calculates the network on the slope first calculates the net force. So we first get F net, and then we put F net in the W net formula. So you'll basically just be using this W net formula once. Let me show you. So as we discussed, this is the free body diagram for the situation, and we can resolve Fg into components. Now, when we calculate the net force, because the second method requires us first calculating the net force, we need to consider all the forces acting in the direction of the motion of the object. So basically all the forces parallel to the slope, which would be these three forces. So remember, in order to do this method, I first need to find F net. I know that you know from Newton's laws that F net is equal to MA. That is true. That's Newton's second law. But F net, this over here, is also equal to the sum of the forces that act on the object again in the direction of motion of the object, in that plane of motion. So what I mean by that is the object is moving up the slope. The object is moving in this plane, the parallel plane to the slope. So we need to consider all the forces parallel to the slope. 
to find the net force, we're going to add the force applied plus the frictional force plus FG perpendicular. The, I mean, sorry, FG parallel, the parallel component of the force. The reason why I do not consider the normal force and FG perpendicular is because those two forces are perpendicular to the plane in which the object is moving. So we need to choose a positive direction when working with forces because forces are vectors, which means they have a direction. So I'm choosing up the slope as positive. My applied force is going up the slope. So it is going to be a positive 40. Then my friction is going down the slope. So it's going to be a negative. And my friction is 15. So negative 15. Plus, we always start off our um, working on F net with vector addition. And when we substitute in, that's when we consider the direction. FG parallel is also going down the slope. Take a look at this arrow. It's pointing down the slope. So we need to substitute that in with a minus as well. And remember, we already worked out FG parallel. We did that earlier. That was the first thing that I did in my question over here. Here's FG parallel. 3 times 9.8 times sin 25. So 3 times 9.8 times sin 25. And when I add all of these things together, I will get F net. And we end up getting 12,575,02,31 newtons. See how it is a positive number? It means that the net force is going up the slope. So the net force is going in this direction. That's where F net is going. And remember, my displacement is also going up the slope. So when I work out the net work, I use the net force multiplied by the displacement and cos of the angle between the net force and the displacement. So my net force is 12,575,0231. I don't round it off because this is not the end of my question. My displacement, how far I moved is, I gave it to you in the question, four meters. So we're multiplying that by four. And then the angle, the angle between F net and displacement. Remember again, F net is going up the slope. Displacement is up the slope. There's no angle between them. So it is zero. And my answer once again is 50 comma three zero joules. Your unit is joules. You worked out the net work. And note how obviously this answer is exactly the same as when I did the previous method. I really hope that this example made sense. Please comment down below what you'd like to see next. Subscribe for more. Check out the playlist link below for more work energy power and more physics in general. Bye everyone.